Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It's Tuesday, August 28th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. After refusing to acknowledge reporters' questions all day about John McCain, President Donald Trump finally spoke about the late senator last night during a dinner with evangelical leaders. Trump finally paid tribute to McCain, who died Saturday from brain cancer. Also, our hearts and prayers uh, are going to the family of Senator John McCain. There's going to be a lot of activity over the next number of days, and uh, we uh, very much appreciate everything that Senator McCain has done for our country. His words came after he was widely criticized for nixing an official statement from the White House that called McCain a hero in favor of his own tweet that offered condolences to the McCain family but offered no mention of McCain's service to our country. It also followed the White House returning the flag to half-staff Monday afternoon in McCain's honor. Following that controversy, Trump issued a statement which read, Despite our differences on policy or politics, I respect Senator John McCain's service to our country and in his honor have signed a proclamation to fly the flag of the United States at half-staff until the day of his internment. The statement did add that Vice President Mike Pence will speak at a ceremony honor McCain at the Capitol on Friday, and the president did grant a request from the McCain family to have his remains transported by the military from Arizona to Washington, D.C. for a service at the U.S. Naval Academy. Trump said that General John Kelly, Secretary James Mattis, and Ambassador John Bolton will represent his administration administration at the services. In a final statement to America, John McCain put down in writing his final thoughts, and he said, Do not despair of our present difficulties, but believe always in the promise and greatness of America, because nothing is inevitable here. Americans never quit. We never surrender. We never hide from history. We make history. Sliding a little bit more local, the Capitol is reporting that the state has awarded demolition money for the Newtown 20 redevelopment project. The state awarded $350,000 toward the project, and Chief Financial Officer for the Housing Authority of the City of Annapolis, Eileen Neely, says that is about half of the cost of the demolition. Earlier this month, CEO Beverly Wilborn addressed the Caucus of African American Leaders saying that for the project to go forward, they would need funding from the state, they would need tax assistance and other funds to make it happen. The project is a $25 million project, and they still claim that it will be complete by late 2020. Reading, writing, arithmetic, and now training on how to stop life-threatening bleeding is taking place at Southern High School in Harwood, Maryland. The, quote, Stop the Bleed training is being conducted by medical staff from the R. Adams County Shock Trauma Center, and it's part of a national initiative of the American College of Surgeons that teaches anyone how to stop life-threatening bleeding until medical help arrives. Staff members at the Shock Trauma Center have trained nearly 2,000 people in Maryland since the program was launched in last August. Now several school systems in Maryland are making the training mandatory in preparation for the new school year. I'm absolutely disgusted that this is what we have come to. In politics, Maryland's Governor Larry Hogan's re-election campaign is getting fatter and fatter. He has raised about $2.5 million in the last two months. Hogan updated his campaign fundraising report yesterday. However, the filing deadline is not until Tuesday, so we don't know what his opponent, Ben Jealous, has raised in this period. Right now, the campaign is reporting that the governor has $9.4 million in cash on hand, and that's about the same that he had at the last filing period, and that he has spent more than a million dollars on recent television ads statewide, including the Baltimore and Washington media markets. Tom Kelso, Hogan's campaign chairman, put the $9.4 million into perspective and said that it is more than the $6.4 million that Governor Martin O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown had on hand at the same time during their 2010 re-election campaign. And again, as I said, we're going to have to wait until Tuesday or Wednesday to hear what Vangelis has done. That is about it for the top news stories today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day for updates because we do update it throughout the day. Please make sure you're recommending us to your friends and your coworkers and your colleagues and your neighbors. 
We do appreciate that. Please give us a rating if you're at a place where you can give us a rating. And other than that, just hang tight because we've got George Young with your local and hot DMV weather forecast. Save the date, September 29th and 30th to see Richard Karn. Yes, Al Borland from the hit television show Home Improvement at the Annapolis Home X. I don't think so, Tim. No, it's true. Richard Karn will be at the Annapolis Home Expo, and while Richard will tell you about what not to do with the home improvement, there will be dozens and dozens of real home improvement contractors to tell you exactly what you should do. Bring in an antique for a free appraisal. Listen to the many workshops to help you make your home into the dream home you always wanted. Thinking about selling or buying? Northrop Realty and Craig Northrop will be on hand to offer tips for staging your home and how to negotiate the waters of one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. It all starts on September 29th at the Byzantium Center on Riva Road, Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from noon to 5. Tickets are only $5 at the door, but get this, if you're named Al or anything close or wear flannel, you're in for free. Remember the Annapolis Home Show, September 29th and 30th. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Tuesday, August 28th. Another day of heat and humidity ahead for Annapolis and all of Anne Arundel County as a high-pressure center to the southeast of the area pushes in warmer air from the south with its clockwise rotation of air. As a result, look for high temps to once again reach the 90 to 95 degree range today as humidity helps create feels like temps of 95 to 105 degrees. Same exact forecast for tomorrow, then more heat and humidity Thursday before a frontal boundary moves through and delivers PM storms to the region Thursday before temps return to the low to mid 80s Friday through the weekend with daily chances of showers and storms. Okay, that's it for today. Make it a great day and be sure to follow DMV weather anywhere all the time at dmvweather.com or on social media via Twitter or Facebook or especially on our free app that you can download from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA weather so you can always stay weather informed. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, but there is something we can do about it. Each year, thousands of people participate in the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's Out of the Darkness Walks. These community events raise awareness for suicide prevention and mental health, letting people know they are not alone. Join us Saturday, September 22nd at the Navy Marine Corps Stadium in Annapolis as we walk to fight suicide. It's the 10th annual Annapolis Out of the Darkness Walk. Registration starts at 10 a.m. This is a family and dog-friendly event. Browse resources provided by local health services and learn how you can become a lifesaver. Funds raised by the Midshore Out of the Darkness Walk support research, education, advocacy, and support for those affected by suicide. Remember, suicide prevention starts with everyday heroes like you. Register today at AFSP.org slash Annapolis. Together, we can help stop suicide. You are not alone. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.